Okay, so this is just going to be a basic introduction to how to use Anki in a bit more advanced of a way than most people use it. So the way that most people use Anki is they simply use the most basic note type, which is called basic. It simply has a front and a back. So when you start using Anki for the first time, because you will basically consider it to be a software version of flashcards, it's going to make sense that you see a front and a back. You see two fields, a front and a back. Of course, a physical flashcard doesn't have anything more than a front and a back. So it makes sense that they're just these two fields. But this is misleading because Anki is much more powerful than this. But just as, as an example of the way most people use it, let's create a deck for learning hiragana, which is a, one of the writing systems for the Japanese language. So most people would use it very simply. Just uh, put the hiragana character on the front and maybe the Latin gloss on the back. And they would add this card and then it would simply show the character on the front and the gloss on the back. So this seems to make intuitive sense and you can make all sorts of flashcards this way. Maybe you could ask a question like, what is the population of Sweden? And then have the answer on the back. So, but this is, this doesn't take advantage of the real power of Aki. So let's uh, move on to an example that does make use of that power. So basically the power of Anki is that you can enter information in a concise way and it can generate multiple card types with that information. So instead of having two fields, you might have more than two fields, maybe four fields. In this case, with this example, we're going to do the hiragana character and the audio for the hiragana character, and then we'll do an example word, and then the audio for the example word. So even though each flashcard only has a front and a back, suddenly we have four fields which are named things unrelated to the front or the back of the card. So say we do that as the character, we do this as the example word. And we could find pronunciation on a website or from a friend for this character and for this word. So pronunciation here and here. Just as an example, I will write it like this. Normally you just drag and drop pronunciation into here. So now the next thing to do is you hit cards up here. And we're going to want to create more than one card type. So let's make the first card type recognize the hiragana character. Here we're going to simply take the character and have the audio appear on the back. And with the next one we'll have produce the hiragana character. So this will be a flipped version of the first one. So you hear the audio and you need to produce the character corresponding to that audio. And then we're going to have one last card that we will call write the example word. So in this case, the audio for the example word will play and then the example word will appear on the back. And when we add this card, instead of just getting one card, we will actually get three cards immediately. So we basically enter the information just once, but we get three cards. And just as an example to show these flashcards, we have the front 
and back. We have the front and the back. And again, front and the back. So this is a very simple example, just four fields and three very simple card types. But Anki can get much more complicated than this with many of my decks have multiple note types which might have seven or eight or even ten card types within them and maybe the fields they'll be 15 or 17 I mean I I also use simpler things like this but the point is Anki can get quite complicated and there are many other functions so in later videos I will explain more complicated note types and card types but for now I just wanted you to get the gist of the idea that Anki is supposed to be efficient and powerful because you enter information in a non-redundant way. You simply enter it once and it will produce multiple cards that test different aspects of your memory.